Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So, w when I was younger, my mom would tell me, don't believe everything you read. Now, she's saying this for obvious reasons. When something is written down, it gives it across like it has a certain gravitas associated with it. And it makes you feel like what you're reading is legit. Even when what you're reading is in no way legit. They are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Not so much. There was a chemical attack in Syria. We don't actually know. The media didn't necessarily nail that down. And it wasn't necessarily pushing the Trump administration to figure out whether or not it was true. We find out a year later that Mattis has no idea whether or not Syria did it or not. The point I'm trying to make to you is that the media in this country somewhat sucks. And it's hard to necessarily just take what they're saying they take what they're saying as being true for granted. I Meaning you can't necessarily take what they're telling you as being somewhat of a flat fact. Back in the old days, the media would have a few main sources that would get a story out to the public itself. Well, we're not in that paradigm. Our paradigm has shifted magnificently. You have the internet that, at the best of times, it gives a decent secondary perspective that gives you a larger context of events that are taking place in the world and is giving you a perspective that mainstream media easily doesn't see or mainstream media is not giving you because of their own biases. At its worst, you're screaming that lizard people are eating babies. Now, I would say that on the totality of this, this is somewhat of a win because you get different perspectives of news and different perspectives of information that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten. By the same token, you can understand that certain governments and certain intelligence services and even private interests would not necessarily like this. It's one thing when you have control of the political apparatus and you have control of the corporate media apparatus because you can control the narrative of events and you control the stories that the public is being indoctrinated with. But the moment that you lose control of that apparatus, you have a problem. The public itself is going to start thinking things and coming up with ideas that you don't particularly like. How do you manufacture consent when the public is no longer looking at the edifice that you were using to manufacture consent? One of the methods that they've started to use is changing information on the web itself to reflect the opinions and dispositions of certain corporations and companies. Now, in the specific case that I want to talk about, however, is Wikipedia. Wikipedia used to be that old source of information where people would go to when they wanted a snapshot of what was taking place. And come to find out, Wikipedia is not a good source of information. Now, I already knew this wasn't a good source of information because it wasn't allowed on our research papers. And for the most part, anybody can change anything on Wikipedia. I, I don't know the full rules, but for the most part, anybody can change anything on Wikipedia, leaving it open to the public to, to change whatever. Well, it's decent and nice when you just have a random person who has the best of intentions changing something on Wikipedia. But like anything else, you already know how this is going to end up being corrupted where you have certain forces or certain people with a large amount of cash that can back somebody protecting them on Wikipedia or going after them, somebody else on Wikipedia, meaning protecting your friends and going after your enemies. This has been weird and so over the top that it's somewhat cartoonish in the case of Philip Cross on Wikipedia. Philip Cross has attacked one person after the next that has pushed forth an anti-war agenda or has pushed forth an agenda that went against the mainstream media narrative. On the other hand, it has protected assiduously right-wingers, people who were pushing the mainstream narrative. So people like Luke Harding, the hack that got obliterated on Real News Network when he was pushing the, the Russia collusion thing in a debate with Aaron Maté, he's protected. People like um, this gentleman right here, Philip, uh, not Philip Murphy, um, Craig Murray, and, and, and Jesus Christ, what is his name? What is his name? Um, he's one of my favorite people, George Galloway. Those are attacked. Those people are attacked. So essentially, people who push an anti-war get attacked. People who push the mainstream media narrative get protected. And Philip Cross is a person who's doing all of this. Philip Cross has apparently worked constantly for the past five years even during Christmases 
And apparently he says he's one person who's just, you know, doing the thing. But he's editing constantly on these posts without taking a break. Either he has a weird medical issue that he really needs to get checked from a psychological disposition. Or he's being backed where people are essentially pushing him to give certain opinions constantly. And that's assuming that it's even one person. That account could be used by some kind of business outfit in order to shield certain people while going after others. My point is, Wikipedia in this case is being used as somewhat of a political or media weapon to go after enemies while protecting friends. Let's take a look at this. Craig Murray go, breaks the story, and it is amazing. I mean, they go after John Pilger. I mean, the, the people who he go after are people I look at him like, yeah, those people are anti-war, and those people are pushing the agenda of trying to stop us from killing the people abroad. Apparently, Wikipedia, or this particular person, doesn't like that. He doesn't like it. And I have to be honest, this looks weird because of the frequency of these posts and the, the way these posts are being made. Let's take a look at the Craig Murray story. story. The Philip Cross Affair. Philip Cross is not one single day off from editing Wikipedia in almost five years. He has edited every single day from August 29, 2013 to May 14, 2018, including five Christmas days. That's 1,721 consecutive days of editing. 133,612 edits to Wikipedia have been made have been made in the name of Philip Cross over the last 14 years. That's over 30 edits per day, seven days a week. And I do not use that figuratively. Wikipedia edits are time, and if you plot them, the time card, Philip Cross, Wikipedia activity is astonishing if it's one individual. Think about that. 30 edits a day, every day, for nearly five consecutive years. And Philip Cross, we're supposed to believe that this is one person. It sounds like this is an account that's a front for some business or for some other interest that is paying somebody to do a particular job or task to edit these things in this way. But let's keep going. Let's, I'm going to show you the ridiculousness of this. The operation runs like clockwork seven days a week, every waking hour, without significant variation. If Philip Cross is genuinely an individual, there is no denying he is morbidly obsessed. Now, let's keep going. Because of the purpose of the Philip Cross operation is systemically to attack and undermine reputations of those who are prominent and challenging the dominant corporate and state media narrative, particularly in foreign affairs, Philip Cross also systemically seeks to burnish the reputations of mainstream media journalists and other figures who are particularly prominent in pushing neocon propaganda and in promoting the interests of Israel. This matters because an ordinary reader who comes across the article in question say the official narrative of Skirples is likely to turn to Wikipedia to get information on the author of the article. Simply put, the purpose of the Philip Cross operation is to make certain that if a reader looks up anti-war personas such as John Pilger, they would conclude they are thoroughly unreliable and untrustworthy, whereas they look up a right-wing mainstream media journalist, they would conclude that they are paragon of virtue and to be trusted. This is extremely important. The first bit of information from a cognitive standpoint that a person gets, oftentimes, the moment that the person accepts that information to be true, it is very difficult to get that person to change their perspective of those events. It's just the way people are. And in this case, Wikipedia is often the very first page that comes up on Google when you do a search. John Pilcher, up pops the page on Wikipedia, I look at it, and they are putting a knife in the guy. Now, the person who's reading this Wikipedia page doesn't realize that it's been edited by somebody who's somewhat of a hack, who's on that page purely to put a knife in Pilger so other people who are looking at the page just like that person who doesn't know anything about Pilger, who wants to learn more about him, believes that these edits are earnest and real and that the information they're getting is earnest and real as opposed to information that's just essentially hackneyed. They want to attack certain personas and Wikipedia essentially is used as a weapon to do it. This is amazing. Wikipedia is usually the first thing that comes up when you do a search. It's often the first thing. I'm not going to say usually. It's often the first thing. And it's often the first page people go to when they want to just get a snapshot of information on somebody. Imagine going to Galloway or Pilger or, or Craig Murray. What would Wikipedia say? What is the average person going to say if they don't necessarily know that this maniac has been going through editing posts? On people that he doesn't like continuously and unceasingly for five years. 
I'm pretty sure that the person who's reading that will probably change their opinion on what they're reading, but they don't know that. They're looking at Wikipedia and thinking that what they're reading is earnest and real by people who actually know things. Not so much. The Philip Cross treatment is meted out not just to left-wingers, but to all skeptical of neoconservatism and how they oppose wars of intervention. A list of Cross victims include Alex Salomon, Peter Osborne, John Pilger, Oregon Jones, Jeremy Corbyn, Tim Haywood, Diane Abbott, Neil Clark, Lindsey German, Vanessa Beasley, George Galloway. As you would expect, Philip Cross was particularly active in making amendments to the Wikipedia articles of alternative media and mainstream media critique sites. Philip Cross has made 36 edits to the Wikipedia entry of The Canary and staggeringly over 800 edits to Media Lens. George Galloway remains Philip Cross's operation's favorite target with quite astonishing 1,800 edits. We're supposed to believe this is one person. Just as revealing other people who Philip Cross seeks to protect and promote, Sarah Smith's BBC Scotland's Uber Unionist has had Philip Cross kindly delete references from her Wikipedia entry to family ties that, uh hum, have helped her career. Labour Friends of Israel Ruth Smith, MP, has had references to Wikipedia released U.S. diplomatic cables that showed she was an informant to the U.S. Embassy on the secrets of the Labour Party, deleted by Philip Cross. Right-wing columnist Melanie Phillips said has her embarrassing climate change denial excised by Cross. Philip Cross not only carefully tends to protect Wikipedia entry of The Guardian editor Catherine Venner, who has taken the paper Ford Square into the neocon camp, Philip Cross actually wrote the original hagiographic entry. The Guardian's MI6 contact, Luke Harding, is particularly looked after by Cross, is particularly looked after by Cross, as are the anti-Corbin obsessives Nick Cohen, John Friedland. So a murder acts, David Ananovich and Oliver Cam. There is no doubt that Cam, lead leader writer of Murdoch's Times, is close to the Philip Cross operation. Many people believe that Cam and Cross are the same person or that Cam is part of a multi-persona. Six times I have personally had hostile, hostile edits to my Wikipedia page by Philip Cross made in precise conjunction with the attacks on me by Cam either on Twitter, in a Times editorial, or in a Prospect magazine. All to gallop, Philip Cross has made 275 edits to my Wikipedia page. These include calling my wife a stripper, deleting my photo, removing my reply to attacks made on me by Cam and Harding, among the others, and deleting my refusal of all honors while a British diplomat. My, my point in this is you can't believe everything you read. And there seems to be some kind of operation on Wikipedia to manage the information that's on Wikipedia. Philip Cross does not attempt to hide his motive or his hatred of those whose Wikipedia entries he attacks. He openly taunts them on Twitter. The obvious unbalance of his edits is plain for anybody to see. I have in the past exchanged messages with Philip Cross. He says he is a person and that his edits in conjunction with Cam tweets because he follows Cam and his tweets inspire him to edit. He says he has met Cam and admits to being in electronic communication with him. The exchange I had with Cross with some years ago, more recent communication with Cross, who has now changed his Twitter ID to Julian. Galloway has offered a reward of £1,000 for the name and address of Cross so he may take legal action. Like he's smeared the guy so much that Galloway wants to take legal action. My view is that Philip Cross is probably a real person but a defense for a group acting under his name. It is undeniably true, in fact, that the government has boasted both MOD and GCHQ have cyber wars ops aiming to defend the official narrative against alternative news media, and that is precisely the purpose of Philip Cross Operational Wikipedia. The extreme regularity of output argues against Philip Cross being either one man or a volunteer operation. I do not rule out, however, the possibility is genuinely just a single, truly obsessed right wing fanatic. What he means by that is Governments have an interest in maintaining a particular narrative of events, and this is kind of my point. The media, for the most part, acts as stenographers, and if the government is trying to get out their narrative and they're working with the mainstream media, that's one thing, but how do you keep that narrative when media gets more diffuse? You may lose right many people, at least more people than you would have lost before. However, you will get a lot of those people if you can control certain sites that people often go to. And this is his point. Whether this is some kind of private enterprise that is paying him to protect 
or defend others, whether this is a governmental agency that is protecting a narrative and defending others, I'm sorry, attacking narratives while defending others, we don't necessarily know. But this seems like Philip Cross is not just a specific individual. It seems like Philip Cross is a front for something. And again, like he says, if he is an individual, he has an obsessive personality. He needs help. Let's say it that way. If that's a single individual, he needs to get psychiatric help immediately. Take a look at the edits that have taken place. Look at this. This is Pilger, Revision History. Cross, cross, cross. Philip Cross, Philip Cross, Cross. Look at all this. Salmon. Philip Cross, Philip Cross, Philip Cross, Philip Cross, Philip Cross. All these Philip Cross. Luke Hardy. Protecting Luke Hardy. Philip Cross, Philip Cross. Like, this is amazing. Oliver Cam. David Arnanovich. This one person is essentially monitoring people who have anti-establishment narratives and monitoring people who don't and he is protecting people that have mainstream media narratives while attacking people that are pushing either an anti-establishment narrative or anti-war even wikipedia is not safe to give you one example of this take a look at this emma barnett a classic philip cross wikipedia operation Hi, Tory Daily Telegraph and Murdoch expensive private school Emma Bartlett Barnett is BBC's politics rising star and stood as host of the BBC flagship Mars program on Sunday. She was there, rude and aggressive, to Labour's Barry Gardner. The highlight of her career so far was during the general election on Radio 4 Women's Hour when she demanded instant top of the head recall of complicated figures from Jeremy Corbyn, a ploy the BBC never turns on the Tories. The most interesting fact about Emma Barley is that her exclusive private education was funded by parents who were pimps and brothel keepers on a large scale for which they were both convicted. I know of no compelling evidence as to why Barnett was or was not complicit in her parents' activities, which financed her education until adulthood. But that this background is interesting and unusual is not in doubt. However, the mainstream media's image protector, Philip Cross, has been assiduous and again, and again, deleting the information about Barnett's parents from Wikipedia. Not only has Cross deleted the reference information of her parents being a brothel keepers, he has repeatedly inserted the ludicrous euphemisms that her parents, that her father was a businessman and her mother was a housewife. A quote unquote businessman. I love that. It's like working girl. Right here. Barnett is demonstrably right wing from her Murdoch and Telegraph columns. Her expensive private education which got her where she is, was undeniably paid for by the proceedings of prostitution and by the trafficking in persons that led to the operation being closed down. But Philip Cross makes sure you can see none of that on Wikipedia. In case you're saying that Cross is justified, Barnett's parents' activities were not her fault and ought not be on a Wikipedia page, let me remind you of one thing. The same Philip Cross edited my own Wikipedia page to state that my wife, Nadria, Nadiria used to be a stripper source to the mail. Cross abuses family information as all other information to defame dissidents or burnish establishment defenders not according to a moral code. He's making the point that if you're trying to say that he shouldn't put this information in because this information doesn't necessarily apply to her, then why is he adding in the fact or why is he adding in the story that his wife was somehow a stripper? Why is it okay to say that his wife was a stripper, but it's not okay to put in the information that the woman's parents essentially ran a, or, and prostitutes or ran a, broth, ran a brothel? Um, be skeptical of your sources. I just say it that way. Wikipedia was never a source that should have been used as information because that source could be editable by anybody. But I don't think most people look at it as an operation that goes in and intentionally burns certain people that it doesn't like while at the same token elevating people that it does like i don't think people look at wikipedia as a political thing they look at it from the standpoint of an information source and they do that to their own detriment they do it to their own detriment even wikipedia is not safe just be aware i leave i put this article here just to say be aware and be skeptical all right guys 
If you enjoy the content, please feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the Patreon. Even Wikipedia is not safe. That's amazing. And, and let me, what I mean by that is the political machinations, either from parties or from governments or from corporations that are seeking to maintain their image, of course, they're going to go through the Internet because, of course, they want to maintain their image from the standpoint of the public. Will intelligence services take it upon themselves in order to try to manipulate the crowd or manipulate information sources? Yes, of course. Of course. Do companies do it? Of course. There are companies that will go out and scrub the Internet of certain information. They can't necessarily get rid of the information, but they can pile on information to push down the content of bad reviews on their particular products. Yeah. They do manage the information on the internet that you see. Be skeptical. Thanks, guys.